Kumusta? Kumusta ka? Kumusta kayo? Kumusta po kayo? What's the difference? Kumusta po kayo? My name is Jay. I'm a Filipino and I call Metro Manila in the Philippines my home. If you have been following my young channel, by now you would have already learned how to pronounce words in Tagalog and all the other fun stuff about the Filipino language. And if this is your first time, please do check out our previous videos because they will help you immensely in discovering and learning the beautiful language, the Tagalog language. And please do not forget to subscribe and click the bell button so you won't miss any videos that I will be posting regularly. So now, let's get on to our topic for today. There's a lot of things to unpack in this video. We are going to be talking about how to greet people in Tagalog, but we are not just going to be content in saying hi or hello in Tagalog, but we are also going to be touching on a few subtopics along the way, including the Tagalog concept of politeness. We will also be touching a bit on personal pronouns and also talk about how to connect words to make them more fluid. So, let us begin. Magsimula na tayo. In Tagalog, when we greet someone, we say, Kumusta ka? Kumusta ka? If it sounds Spanish, it is because it comes from the Spanish Como estas? Especially if you say it faster. Como estas? Como estas? Como esta? Como esta? Kumusta? Some people say Kamusta, but that's wrong. So, before you develop the bad habit of saying Kamusta, stop. It is Kumusta. If you are meeting someone for the first time, you can greet that person or persons using kumusta. But be mindful of the new ones in using this greeting. There are social conventions that must be followed in greeting people in Tagalog. And this is centered on a person's age or position in an organization or society, whether that position is real or perceived. In Tagalog, there are familiar or less formal and formal and more polite forms of greeting. So, subukan natin. Let's try. For familiar singular form, you can say kumusta. You can say this to someone younger or someone within your age group or within your peer. You can also say kumusta ka. This is not used for meeting someone for the first time. It is better to use between friends or acquaintances. Here, the pronoun ka, meaning you in the singular form, is used. For familiar plural form, you can still say kumusta. You can say this to a group of people who are younger than you or a group of people within your age group. You can also say kumusta kayo. Here, we added the pronoun kayo which means you in the plural form. This is best used when greeting a group of people who are younger or within your age group. The polite form, both singular and plural, are the following. Kumusta po? Use this when you are greeting someone older or someone with a higher position or status even if that person is a bit younger or within your age group like a boss, for example, or, or a supervisor. Po is the form of honorific that is used as a sign of respect. Use this also if you are talking to a mixed group of people with someone older or one or two person with a higher position. It's safer to do that. You can also say, Kumusta po kayo? Use this if you wish to be more polite by adding the pronoun Kayo, which means you in the plural form even if you are talking to one person. It is similar to the Spanish usted, like como esta usted. So, when I greeted you at the beginning of this video with 
Kumusta po kayo? I was being polite. You can also say, Kumusta po sila? Now, this is really, really being polite. Sila means they or uh, the plural form in the third person. It's like saying, how are they doing? In this case, you say, kumusta po sila? As you can see, respect for the elder and people with higher rank is embedded in Filipino culture. And it is also very common in other Asian cultures as well. The best rule of thumb is to always be polite even if you are talking to someone within your age group or at least during the first meeting. There is nothing wrong with that and Filipinos will appreciate you for that. We Filipinos will forgive you if you do not use the polite form, especially if you are still learning the language. However, if you already know the language and still you do not use the polite form, we will think of you as someone being arrogant. And that is not good in establishing or maintaining relationship with Filipinos. Let's move on. This time, you are going to introduce yourself. For familiar singular form, you can say, Kumusta? Ako si Jay. Or, Hi, I am Jay. Ako is the personal pronoun, I. Or you can also use this one. Kumusta ka? Ako si Jay. For familiar plural, you can also say, Kumusta ako si Jay, even if you're talking to a group of people. Or you can say, Kumusta kayo? Ako si Jay. Kayo is the plural of you. For polite, singular, and plural form, you can say, Kumusta po? Ako po si Jay. The honorific po comes after the personal pronoun ako. You can also say, Kumusta po kayo? Ako po si Jay. Or, to be more polite, you can say, Kumusta po sila? Ako po si Jay. The word C between ako and J do not translate to M in English. It is a case marker attached to a noun. In Tagalog, a name cannot stand alone. It has to have what is called a case marker before it. The same is true with inanimate nouns. And we are going to be tackling this more in succeeding videos. Just be aware of this concept for now. Let's move on. For the familiar singular form, you can try this. Kumusta? Ako si Jay. Kinagagalak kitang makilala. Hello, I am Jay. I am happy to know you. That's the literal translation. Or you can say, Kumusta ka? Ako si Jay. Kinagagalak kitang makilala. Here, we use the word kitang. A combination of the personal pronoun kita, which means me to you, and the suffix ng. We'll talk about that in a second. Also, you will notice that the sentence structure does not correspond to English. We will cover that in succeeding videos. For familiar plural form, you can try, Kumusta? Ako si Jay. Kinagagalak ko kayong makilala. Or, Kumusta kayo? Ako si Jay. Kinagagalak ko kayong makilala. Ko is the indirect form of the personal pronoun I. Tagalog personal pronouns have different forms including indirect and direct depending on the focus of the sentence. Ako is the direct form. Here, we also see the personal pronoun kayo in blue. You in the plural form is combined with the suffix nang. For the polite form, both singular and plural, you can say this, Kumusta po? Ako po si Jay. Kinagagala ko po kayong makilala. Or, Kumusta po kayo? Ako po si Jay. Kinagagala ko po kayong makilala. If you really want to be very polite, you can say this, Kumusta po sila? Ako po si Jay. 
kinagagalak ko po silang makilala. The honorific po is placed after the personal pronoun ako and ko. Both mean I. Ako is the direct form and ko is the indirect form of I. Now, you must be wondering, what is that NG attached to the word kita and kayo? It is called a ligature that modifies the word that is connected to. There are two more ligatures, G and na, but we are not going to bother with those two for now. That's a topic for another day. We also touch a bit on personal pronouns like ako, ko, kayo, and kita. I will have a dedicated video on those topics, so please do catch it in the future. While we are on the topic of greetings, let me talk to you about how Filipinos greet each other depending on the time of day. If you have guessed that we are going to talk about how to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, then you are right. But in Tagalog, we have an extra greeting which translates to good noon. And I kid you not. Which brings me to the Filipinos' concept of time and how we divide the day into different parts and how we greet people depending on those parts. We generally look at time of the day in six parts. The first would be what we call Madaling Araw. This would be around 1 a.m. to around 4 a.m.-ish. The next one is Umaga, which is somewhere between 5 a.m. and 11 a.m. during midday. After that would be Tanghali, which is around 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. During Tanghali, generally the sun would be above you. Because the Philippines is near the equator, it is very easy to tell if it's already midday. After Tanghali would be Hapon, which is around 1 p.m. to around 6 in the afternoon. And then after that would be Gabi, which is somewhere between 6 o'clock at night to around 11 o'clock. The last would be what we call Hating Gabi, which is around 11 p.m. to around... 1 a.m. the following day. This is how we greet depending on the part of the day. Between Madaling Araw and Umaga, so that's around 1 a.m. to 11 a.m. in the morning, we will greet people Magandang Umaga. Of course, we don't expect people to knock on your doors during Madaling Araw or meet someone on the street during Madaling Araw, but it does happen, and if it happens, we greet people magandang umaga maganda means beautiful so it is saying beautiful morning again we see the ligature ng attached to the word maganda it smoothens the flow of the word because maganda ends in a vowel we are gonna be talking more about that in detail in a future video to be polite we say magandang umaga po during Tanghali, we use the greeting Magandang Tanghali or to be polite, Magandang Tanghali po. Now, there is no equivalent greeting in English. You don't greet people good noon. But in the Philippines, we have Magandang Tanghali or Magandang Tanghali po. In the afternoon, between 1 p.m. and 6 p.m., we greet people with Magandang hapon or magandang hapon po. During the evening or during gabi, around 6 p.m. to around 11 p.m., we would use the greeting magandang gabi. And to be polite, we say magandang gabi po. During hating gabi, we use the same greeting around 11 p.m. to around 1 p.m. the following day. Again, we don't expect people to be knocking on our doors during this time, but it does happen, and if it does, we greet people magandang gabi or magandang gabi po. Again, my best advice is always to be polite, and it is not very difficult to do. Just add po at the end of the sentence. 
for anyone who speaks other Asian languages like Japanese with its complex form of honorifics, you can see that the Tagalog honorific system is far simpler. So, what did we learn today? We learned how to greet people in Tagalog. We learned that being polite is part of Filipino culture. We learned a little bit about personal pronouns and how to connect words to make them more fluid. And we learned that there is a greeting for midday. We will continue our discussions on greetings in the next video. Also, we will slowly uncover some of the concepts we slightly touch in this video. And those are personal pronouns, case markers, ligatures, and basic Tagalog sentence structure. I hope you learned something new today and have inspired you to learn the beautiful language Tagalog. There are a number of online Tagalog courses out there and other YouTube channels on Tagalog, so please do check them out. If there are available formal courses on Tagalog in your community or in your area, I would encourage you to take them. But please do not forget to subscribe and to click on the bell button so you won't miss any video that I will be coming out regularly. I hope to see you again. Hanggang sa susunod.